Today we will start our discussion on analysis of algorithms. So why is analysis of algorithms required? So uh, given a problem we can solve it in multiple ways. So uh, for example if we have a list of numbers we can sort it in multiple ways. We can use uh, insertion sort, we can use merge sort or any other sort. So that's why we have here multiple choices. If we have just single choice, then there is no need for analysis. That is the only way to solve the problem. But here we are presented with choices. So we have to pick one of these, the best for a given scenario. That's why this analysis of algorithm is required. So which one is the best? This is essentially analyzing it. So we compare algorithms, but how can we compare it? Do we take uh, measure the take some timer and see this algorithm took uh, 10 millisecond, the other algorithm took 5 millisecond, then the second one is better. Can we say that? Maybe that the algorithm that took 10 millisecond was better than 5 millisecond. Maybe uh, we ran that on some high powerful computer. Mm, that is why it took lesser time. Or maybe if uh, we uh, increase the length of input. If there are many many more elements in the input maybe that 10 millisecond uh, algorithm takes lesser time maybe it takes 15 millisecond in that case and this uh, other algorithm starts taking uh, 50 or 60 millisecond so that's why we have to compare in terms of running time and space required but we will come to this running time later how do we measure this running time and this is also called time and space complexity analysis so now the question is how do we measure the running time? If we run uh, same algorithm on different machines, then the time will vary. Even in the different runs on the given machine, it will vary depending on how overloaded the computer is. So we should uh, theoretically come out with some way of measuring the algorithm, how good an algorithm is, and which should be independent of the machine, uh, the load on the machine, or the programming language, some languages can be faster, some can be slower, the same algorithm. So we will come to this. How do we define the running time? So uh, running time, by running time we mean uh, how the time taken by a given algorithm increases with respect to increase in input size. So we don't measure the absolute times. We see that how is this running time dependent on the size of input. So if input doubles and the running time also doubles, then we say that it's linearly related to input. But if input doubles and the running time time taken is uh, roughly 4x, then we will see that it's quadratically related to input. So it's higher order power of n, n square. So that is how we measure the running time. So uh, by input size here mean the size of the input. So input uh, size can denote a number of elements in an array if we are working with an array problem. If we are working with uh, a tree, some algorithm on tree or linked list or graph. So all of these have a concept of nodes. So there we will measure the input size in terms of number of nodes in that graph or linked list or tree. Or uh, alternatively if we are interested in the number of edges uh, let's say we are traversing some edges and we are interested in how many such traversals will it take then uh, maybe we will consider number of edges to be an input in that case and let's say we are working with a string problem there we can take number of characters in a given string as the number of inputs or input size similarly uh, we can also in some scenario take number of digits as the input size so it will depend on the problem uh, what is the definition of input size now what is a running time so we express running time of algorithm as a function of input size which we have already talked about and since this is a function with respect to n so input size we will generally denote by this small n and t for time so since it's a running time we usually denote it with capital t and this bracket n this means function of n in mathematics classes you would have also seen 
f of n means some function of n. So here, instead of f, we are using t for time. Now, why do we express running time like a function of n? So, as you have, would have already guessed, we wanted to come up with a solution which is independent of machine, independent of programming language, independent of the state of a given machine. So, this is independent of all of those. So, we can correctly judge a given algorithm. Which algorithm is better, we can theoretically estimate using this approach. That's why we represent running time as a function of n instead of actual time measured using some timer. Now let's take some examples to understand it better. So let's say the problem is to find the sum of two numbers. So there is a typo here. So sum of two numbers. So we have two numbers x and y. So if x and y are 5 and 4, we will calculate sum as 5 plus 4 equal to 9. And let's say this addition operation takes constant unit, constant time, constant number of CPU cycles. One addition operation takes some constant time. I am not saying one CPU cycle or two CPU cycle, but independent of what these values 5 and 4 are. So instead of 5, 4, if we have other value, let's say 10 and 20, still we are performing just one addition operation and it will take same number of CPU cycles. So you see that it's independent of the inputs if irrespective of whether x or y is 5 or 4 or 10 or 20 it will uh, include one addition operation and the problem statement is sum of two numbers so number is fixed number of elements is fixed to be two so in this case it's a constant time one unit of time or some constant unit of time and the function will be represented as t of m is c. So we usually denote constant with c letter, small c. And if we have multiple constants, then we will use c1, c2 and so on. So it's clear why the time is constant here. Later we will also see a shorthand of representing this. So here we are representing as some uh, function having multiple terms, which, which contain different orders of this input size n. But later we will see some shortcut where we will use big O notation. So in that case we will call it big O of 1. And if it's uh, linearly related we will say big O of n. So we will see it in our next lesson or maybe next to next lesson. So for now just stick with this. So this is constant time. Now let's take another example. In this case we are given an array or a list A and we have to find the sum of all the numbers in that list. So here the size is not given. What is the input size? How many elements are in the list? The problem statement just say uh, it, no matter how many elements are there, give me the sum of all those numbers. So for example, if we have a list A which has just four elements, one, two, three and four, the sum will be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. So you see that there are three addition operations. So if input is 4, we perform three addition operations. Let's take another input. So this list instead of 4 now contains 10 elements. Now what is the result? Same problem statement, just different input. Now for input size 10, we perform 9 addition operations. In general, if we have n inputs, then we perform n minus 1 addition operations. So this time taken, if for 1 addition it takes some constant time, then for 9 addition operations it will take 9 times that constant or in general n minus 1 times that constant. So here time depends on number of elements in a linear fashion of course. It's not quadratic, clearly you can see. If n becomes 100, number of additions become 99 exactly one less. So we will represent it in this fashion c1 times n plus c2. So n, so this c1 is some constant and n has a power of 1. So this is linearly related to input size or we will call it's a linear function with respect to n. Now let's take another example. 
let's say this time we have to sort the elements of an array or list so by sorting we mean if we have elements let's say 5 4 1 2 3 then after sorting this should be in some order like first element should be less than or equal to second element second element should be less than or equal to third element and so on so you can see this is sorted it can also be other way around in descending order so this is the sorting problem now there are many ways of doing it uh, we can use insertion sort which is a very natural way of sorting or like sorting a deck of cards so uh, this turns out to take uh, time which is quadratic with respect to input size and we will see the time complexity of insertion sort later why it is quadratic and not linear or constant time and then quadratic then we write c1 multiplied by n square plus c2 multiplied by n plus c3 so we list down all the powers of n in decreasing order but for time complexity analysis we generally ignore lower order terms that is terms containing lower powers of input size and why is that so all of these analysis time complexity analysis uh, we generally are worried about larger values of n because the modern computers can handle a uh, smaller input size very well we are not worried about that even if your algorithm is bad it will take almost similar time so we are worried about larger values of n so if n becomes large then this n square will become even larger so if c1 c2 these constants are not very very large then this term will dominate over other smaller terms so that's why we ignore them there can be exceptions to this where the constant themselves are very big let's say for a given uh, application uh, we are we are sure that n cannot be larger than let's say 10 million and now uh, this some one of the constant itself becomes let's say 100 million then uh, here it's n square and here it's n already already there and c2 you can replace by 100 million which will be larger than n so it will itself become uh, 10 times n square so this itself will become n square so with the exception of those very large values of constant generally we are worried about only the largest order so if we use insertion sort it will take quadratic time if we use other sorting algorithm like merge sort it will take n log n time and of course lower order terms which i have not written here similarly if you use heap sort it will again take n log n time so you see that uh, why our time complexity analysis is important and how we define the running time and how we can get the running time for a algorithm we have solved so we will continue our discussion on analysis of algorithm in the next lesson we will see uh, different ways of analyzing uh, the running time we will see at worst case analysis which gives you an upper bound so we are generally want to be assured that it cannot go uh, beyond that so we are mostly concerned with the worst case analysis but we will also look at uh, best case and average case analysis in the next lesson so see you in the next lesson